Welcome to the Design Thinking Initiative. Come on in. My name is Isabel Hodge and I can't wait to show you how to use my favorite machine, the laser cutter. Today, we will be learning how to manipulate an image into Corel Draw, focus the laser cutter in input material settings, and send data to the laser cutter. Of course, we'll be learning laser cutter safety throughout this tutorial. My friend Elizabeth will show you how it's done. Let's get started. Our laser cutter works by firing a super thin laser beam at your material. Depending on how strong the beam is, it will either engrave designs or cut straight through. For this specific laser cutter, you will have to send files directly from Corel Draw on this computer. Go ahead and sign in using the DTI login and password. Our first project is going to be laser cutting a leaf. If you already have a different file ready to go, import it into Corel Draw and skip ahead. Otherwise, open up Corel Draw. Close the login window and give your project a name. Then edit the dimensions to 24 inches wide and 12 inches tall. That's how big our laser cutter is. Now find the folder on the desktop labeled Laser Cutting Tutorial Materials and drag the leaf image into Corel Draw. Because it is a pixelated image, it is called a bitmap. We are going to trace it next to generate a clean line for the laser to follow. Things that the laser cutter cuts instead of engraves are called vectors. They are defined by equations, not pixels, so they never get blurry. In the toolbar, set bitmap, then click line drawing trace. This preview window shows what your trace will look like. Try to make it look smooth while still maintaining its detail. Also go ahead and delete the original image, then click OK. Next, change the line width by clicking this nib icon. When our laser cutter sees a line that is hairline width, it cuts through. Otherwise, it engraves the material. We have to check how big our design is too. When you click on it, its dimensions are listed in the upper toolbar. Make sure the lock is closed so that it stays proportional, then scale it to the size you want. Finally, we have to reposition the design to the upper left corner. It is important to save as much material as possible so that we can use the leftover scraps instead of throwing them away. Select the design, then check out this grid of tiny boxes. These represent its edges and corners. Click on the upper left box to see the coordinates of the design's upper left corner, then change the x value to about 0.2, then the y value to 11.8. Because the laser cutter isn't calibrated completely perfectly, these coordinates will bring our design very close to the edge, but still leave a little wiggle room. We're ready to pick out our material. We have lots of colored acrylics as well as different types of wood. Please always try to find a scrap you like before cutting into a new sheet. We can conserve financial and environmental resources as much as possible. Little pieces are on the top shelf and full sheets are below. You can also use paper, leather, and more. If you're working on a sizable project, please always prototype on chipboard first. Talk to us about using new materials before trying them so that we can make sure they're safe to laser cut. Now we get to turn on the laser cutter. Press the switch on the extension cord. If it doesn't turn on, then try the switch on the right side of the laser cutter. You'll see the screen light up and the laser cutter will move back and forth to calibrate itself. Open the lid and place your material on the bed so that it lines up with the upper left corner. The next step is to focus the laser so that it's the correct distance away from the surface. Click the focus button, then flip down the little silver pendulum. It should just barely touch the material. We're going to move the material up or down using the arrow keys. A good way to test it is to push the pendulum so that it swings a little. At the perfect distance, it will stop when it touches the material. Turn on the Fumix air filter now. It's going to get loud in here. This is a really important step. You cannot laser cut without turning this on. Come back over to the computer, print the file in order to change the laser cutter settings. Make sure the Zing laser cutter is the selected printer. First, check the print preview and make sure the design is in the upper left corner and looks the way you want it to. Now click on Preferences. First, set the width to 24 and the height to 12, just like we did in Corel Draw.
then, because we are only cutting and not engraving, select vector instead of combined. Raster means only engraving, and combined means both. These are the settings for the laser cutter, including its speed, power, and frequency. You need to use different values for different materials, so look at the sheet next to the computer to find out which numbers to enter. For example, we're using 1 8 inch wood for this demo. So in this vector, or cutting section, I'm entering the speed, power, and frequency. Then click OK. When you get back to this print window, make sure to click Apply to save those settings. Then click Print, and watch closely for the bright green data light on the laser cutter to blink on and off. Once it stops blinking, the file has been transferred to the laser cutter. Now we're ready to laser cut! All you have to do is close the lid and press Go. Watch the laser cutter, but don't stare at the laser. If the material is ever on fire, more than a small flame where the laser is, immediately stop the print by hitting the switch on the extension cord. Open the lid to the laser cutter, drop the fire blanket in, and close the laser cutter again. This will smother the fire. Fire averted! <laughs> Opening the lid will also stop the laser cutter, as will pressing the stop button. There's a fire extinguisher outside the door, as well as the fire blanket right next to the laser cutter in case of emergencies. Yay, now we have our leaf! Now we have to cut off the unusable parts of the material. Click on the Line tool. Click on the top edge of the page and drag down the bottom edge while holding down the Control key to make sure it's perfectly vertical. Move the line so that it's right next to where you want to cut. Then make the line hairline width so that it will be cut and not engraved. Delete all other objects with the delete key so that only the line is left. Print the file again and make sure the preferences were saved. Discard the unusable scraps in the appropriate recycle bin and put the rest of the materials back on the shelf. When you're done, make sure to turn off the laser cutter and Fumex and exit out of all of your files. You can email them to yourself if you want to save them. Lastly, write down your material use on a materials log. In this episode, we learned how to manipulate an image into CorelDRAW, focus the laser cutter and input material settings, and send data to the laser cutter. Now that you know how to laser cut, you should become certified to use the Design Thinking Initiative laser cutter. Go to Calendly.com to schedule an appointment. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I'm so excited to see what you make. Stay creative!